welcome. I'm your host, Hiram Tiaz, in the 10th program of MB Coal Management course. Today with me, the subject expert is Mr. Sai Chaudhary. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Our today's topic is about organizational environment. Expert, could you please introduce us with today's topic? Of course. But let me first give an overview of the last program. Leadership. Leading. A management function that involves working with and through people to accomplish organizational goals. The process of leadership, traits of leaders, culture and leadership, power and leadership, kinds of power, models of leadership. Leadership is a process of influencing a group to achieve goals and a leader is one who has influence over others and who has managerial authority. Now, as you might have noted, a leader is one who has influence over others and who has managerial authority. Now, since a leader wields a certain power over others, how does this power come? It has certain sources, or we can say there are certain kinds of power. For example, there is reward power, there is coercive power, there is legitimate power, there is referent power, and there is expert power. These are the kinds of power or the sources of power that a leader has. And now an overview of today's topic, that is organizational environment. Overview. Organizational environment. Forces in organizational environment, industry life cycle, the general environment, managing the organizational environment, organizational structure, reducing environmental impact, and change as a two-way process. We can see that all organizations work in an environment. While they have their own internal environment also, which we may better call organizational culture. The environment or the organizational environment normally we call the conditions outside the organization in which the organization operates. Now these may be very broad forces or there may be some forces directly influencing the working of the organization. These forces continue to change and they may change in intensity and they may also change in their ranking as uh, the major or minor powers working over the organization, but the manager has to appreciate the forces and uh, he has to maneuver according to uh, the interests of the organization, taking into account these forces which go for making the environment. Now, what are these elements or forces that uh, influence the working of an organization? Organizational environment are the forces that are outside the organization's boundary that can impact it. Forces can change over time and are made up of opportunities and threats. Opportunities, openings for managers to enhance revenues or open markets, for example, new technologies, new markets, and new ideas. Threats, issues that can harm an organization, for example, economic recessions, or oil shortages. Manager must seek opportunities and avoid threats. As we were mentioning earlier, the environmental forces are all the time there, but the manager has to appreciate the need of uh, changing the tactics and maneuvers and make his organization a success. The environment may have certain forces which may weaken the organization or which may work as threats to the organization. 
and the environment may also provide opportunities to the organization. Now, it is for the manager to change threats or the weaknesses into strengths. And that is the success of a manager. He has to have a quick but detailed view of the environment all the time. And he has to develop his policy accordingly, also taking into account the internal conditions or the culture of the organization. What are the various reasons of strength and weaknesses? The reasons are many and we'll be studying them in some detail. But in brief, these could be new technologies, new markets, new competitors, the suppliers, the distributors, and the buyers or the customers. So there are a number of elements that uh, go for making these forces or that weaken or strengthen these forces which we call business environment. How can we further explain these forces with the help of this visual on the screen? As you can see, the slide shows two kinds of forces or two broad categories. That is the general environment and the task environment. Now, the general environment is comprised of broad forces like uh, economic changes, like uh, political changes, and like uh, technological forces or global forces, while task environment is of uh, the narrower environment of uh, the factors that directly influence the uh, organization. For example, we can see in task environment competitors, suppliers, customers, and distributors. Now, let's see them in some detail in the coming slide. Task environment, forces from customers, distributors, suppliers, and competitors. Suppliers, provide organization with inputs. Managers need to secure reliable input sources. Suppliers provide raw materials, components, and even labor. Working with suppliers can be hard due to shortages, unions, and lack of substitutes. Suppliers with scarce items can raise the price and are in good bargaining position. Managers often prefer to have many similar suppliers of each item. Managers or every business has to have suppliers. They have to have inputs. Now, every business needs quality inputs or quality supplies. While there may be problems at the end of suppliers, still every manager would like that he has good suppliers, that is, who can supply quality. And if he is observing just-in-time inventory system, it is all the more necessary that the supplier should also be in time. They should be ISO certified and they should be prompt in responding to supplies or sometimes change of supplies. So there has to be a good relationship between the business and its suppliers. The suppliers could be also the major direct suppliers or they could have their own subcontractors. The manager must have good relations with the suppliers and he must also be cognizant of the fact whether they are the direct suppliers or they have their own subcontractors and vendors because all the time the manager has to be watchful of the quality and he also has to note whether or not there are any problems at supplier's end. For example, sometimes there is workers' strife and therefore the supplies cannot be in time. Similarly, there could be price hikes and sudden changes in price which could create 
problems for the managers and similar other problems. So that is the aspect of suppliers which is a major part of task environment. Now at the other end there are distributors also. What are the distributors and what are their role and uh, how important they are in the task environment? Distributors are the organization that help others to sell goods. Computer manufacturers first used special computer stores to sell their computers, but later sold through discount stores to reduce costs. Some distributors like Walmart have strong bargaining power. They can threaten not to carry your product. Distributors as the word shows, distribute the product of the manufacturer or the wholesaler. Now, sometimes distributors are so big that they can refuse to take the, carry the materials of uh, one or the other business that may create problems. And sometimes the manufacturers like to distribute themselves as once compact computers did but uh, they use their own stores and warehouses and try to have their own distribution system but uh, it did not prove cost effective and mostly the manufacturers now uh, use other distributors services and warehousing and uh, thus avoid the, uh, another management spread in uh, distribution and logistics. So this is uh, where the manager's role comes. He has to decide whether he will use other distributors or they will have their own distribution system. If they have other distributors, then what are the status of those distributors and how do they behave and what is their system? how efficient it is. From here, we can go to the third important element of task environment, that is customers. Customers are people who buy the goods. Usually there are several group of customers. For computers, as also with many other products, there are businesses, home and government buyers. Customers could be big, medium or small. They have their own rating in credit standing also. Some customers pay in cash, others avail of credit. Sometimes some, they, some of them have high credit rating while others do not uh, have a good credit standing. So the manager have to decide how would they deal with all these customers. But customers are essential part of the business also. Obviously, there would be no selling without customers. And in total quality management science, we say customer is the king. And customer satisfaction holds a uh, prime place in business. So this is where the manager's role comes and he has to decide how to deal with all sorts of customers so that their uh, level of satisfaction remains high. They have no complaints from